Hi, I'm Pastor Ray Chrisman with the Crowley Seventh-day Adventist Church, and you've just tuned in to a special hour featuring a service here at the Crowley Church. We're located in Texas on 3200 FM 1187, and we just pray that you will be blessed by today's service. If you have a question or a prayer need that comes up, please give us a call on the number on the screen. I mean, the Lord bless you as you join us during today's service. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before Him His glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of holiness. The Trembling and fearfulness, he 
I've asked uh, Pastor Ray many questions about uh, how you do things here. And uh, I see what time it is. Do I need to get off right at 12 o'clock? No? I hear some people say no, some people say yes. And we may need to have an intervention or something. A um, little bit of background uh, about me. My name is Carl Leukert. I pastor the Longview and Jefferson Central Church District out in East Texas. Um, my degree actually is in broadcasting. I graduated in 1994 from Southwestern Adventist University here in Keene, uh, where I met my wonderful wife, Sharon. Our professor there, Bob Mendenhall, used to joke that the best thing to come out of Oklahoma was I-35. But I have to say it was my wife. Uh, so we have been married for more than 20 years, have three children, a son, Michael, he's 17, just turned 17 this week. Then we also have Matthew, he's 10, and Greta is 9. Uh, life is fun when you have children, isn't it? Oh, come on, isn't it? Good. There's a lot of children here in the church, and I, I, I very much am, am very uh, happy about that, because a church with children is a church that is a living entity. And uh, make sure you support the children in the church and whatever endeavors they take part in. I uh, grew up in the home of a teacher. My father was uh, a music teacher, actually. Uh, I was born in Maplewood, Min Maplewood, Minnesota, at Maplewood Academy, actually Hutchinson, Minnesota. And, uh, so I've been on academy or school campuses most of my life. Uh, we were at Maplewood Academy and then Georgia Cumberland Academy, and then my father retired from Thunderbird Academy in Arizona. Uh, my brother followed his tradition. He's now at Monterey Bay Academy as a teacher. But all of that means nothing. Because in the whole scheme of things, the only thing that matters is that we know Jesus Christ. He is the number one thing in our lives. I hope he is in yours. Uh, I want to welcome also the viewers on Good News TV. It's a uh, very uh, interesting for me to be here because my degree in broadcasting, I've usually been behind the cameras, uh, never in front. Three Angels Broadcasting Network was where we first started out of college, and I also worked for Life Talk Radio Network, uh, managed a radio station in north central Arkansas for a few years, so it's kind of strange to be in front of the cameras. Uh, so if I'm a little nervous, you'll understand. You know, this weekend, Sharon and I are here doing a, a marriage seminar. And I believe very strongly in marriage. Uh, I love being married. And if you're married and you cannot say that, then you definitely need to come tonight. Because you should really be thrilled to be married if you are. Let me tell you a story when I was little in Georgia. Went to the county fair. And we're walking through this county fair there in Calhoun, Georgia. And I got interested in something. And I looked up, ready to take the hand of, this, of my mother next to me. And that was not my mother. And I stood there as a little boy and I looked around and I could not see my mom. And I could not see my dad. And there were people all around me. But even though there was a crowd, I was alone. I felt very terrified. It was not a good experience. Being alone is something that many people face in their lives. Some people handle it better than others. Judy Garland, the actress, once said, if I am a legend, why am I so lonely? Perhaps Albert Schweitzer had it right when he stated, we are all so much together, but we are all dying of loneliness. So today, I'd like to talk to you in support of singles. We're here for a marriage seminar, but singles struggle with things in their lives too. So I want to, want to talk to you today about singles and the importance of singles. 
You know, though I am not single, I know many people who are. As a pastor, I've seen their struggles. And so I want to talk to you about some of the, the struggles they are and, and the fact that God's word has answers for the, the struggles that singles go through. Uh, one of the things that, that singles struggle with, and this is singles of every age, I need to tell you, and that is one of the morality issue. Sexual desire and pressure is huge for singles. You, you may be surprised to know, but the demographic, the age group, that is the most likely to have sexual relations outside of marriage are those that are middle age who have been married before. It's actually a higher percentage than teenagers or young adults because the idea is, well, since I've already been married and I'm not a virgin anymore, then the sexual purity thing doesn't really matter. And this is Christians as well. So there is the struggle uh, with the sexual temptation. And, and, and often the older a person is, the stranger their virginity. I don't know if you heard uh, some of the stories of the, the last Olympics. But in the midst of all the, the things about the actual sports, there was one story that stood out. And that was the runner, Lolo Jones. And how odd it was for her to be in her 30s and, and still be a virgin. And people thought, oh, no, that can't be true. She's got to be lying. What's wrong with her for still being pure? You know, there's another thing that, str that singles struggle with, and that's the lonely factor. Often singles can feel left out, even in the midst of of a thriving church congregation. Like when I was at that county fair and I was alone in the midst of a crowd. Singles sometimes in church can still feel alone in the midst of a congregation. They may even wonder where or even if they belong. And we have, you know, we have uh, uh, singles ministries in many churches in many places. And, and so we say, well, you singles, uh, that, that's, that's your place to go. But sometimes they even feel alone in the singles ministry because people expect, well, what this really is, is a sanctified dating service. Which is not the case. They may wonder at times if God hears them or has left them alone as well. I've talked to singles who want to remain pure. They want to find a spouse. And it seems that God isn't hearing their prayer. Then the, the, another thing that the singles struggle with is the, the weird factor. Genesis 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 states, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And Proverbs 18, verse 22 says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. But how about, what about the singles? Are they left out of those blessings? Do they feel ostracized? They feel like, oh, we're not a part of things. We can't have blessings like this. A common question that singles get asked is, don't you want to be married? Now, I have to let you know, there are singles who would answer that, no, not really. And that's okay. I have a number of friends that are, are in their, their late 40s, early 50s, never been married. And they're fine. That's okay. But still, others have a tendency to look at them as they're weird. There must be some reason why they haven't gotten married. There, there might be something wrong with them. And then for somebody who's a widow or a widower, uh, my father-in-law passed away right around the time our daughter was born, a brain tumor. And people keep asking my mother-in-law now, well, don't you want to date again? Aren't you about ready to get married again? 
And she tells them, I'm married for life, and I have not felt that desire to marry anyone else yet. And, and, but yet there's that pressure. There's always that subtle message. Well, don't you want to do this again? Don't you want to find somebody? And she's had a lot of hurt. And many singles who are widows or widowers or divorced can feel that. The plight of the single parents. And I will say single parents. A lot of times it's single mothers, but there's also single fathers that struggle. You know, we're married and we have three kids and it's hard. I cannot imagine being this, a single parent with even one child. The burdens that, that the single parents go through is something the rest of us, we cannot understand. But we need to be there to support. To say, we are here for you. We know it's a struggle. We know it's hard. And God has answers for all the things that singles struggle with. If you take your Bibles, um, turn in, in your Bibles to our scripture reading that was in the bulletin today. And that is from Romans 12, verses 1 through 5. Romans 12, verses 1 through 5. And here Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That is the answer for the morality question. Give your life 100% to God and let him align your life with his will and his word. Now, I, got, I have to let you know, this is one of the most difficult areas that singles struggle with. And as I said before, not just the young people. But I, I am going to take a little detour here and talk about young people in this area. And I want you to know the church is partly to blame. We are partly to blame. Do you know when typically the sexual peak as far as desire is in a young person? In most young people, especially males, it's 18 years old. 18 to 20. Women, roughly the same thing. And yet we tell young people, we're going to put you in a college filled with other people who have the same raging hormones, but don't you dare touch until you get out of college and get your degree and get your advanced degree and get yourself set up. You have to, you have to wait for another 10 to 12 years before you can fulfill that desire you have in you. And that's why so many young people, they say, forget it. Why go through that as a society and, and I'll, I'll speak plainly here as a church we have many times set young people up to fail in this area of sexuality when they're young you know I told some people I, I would love to see a college or a university who says you know what if you are in college or if you're in a university and you feel drawn to marry someone, we have special funds. We will give you a special scholarship if you do it the right way. I see your pastor here. He's nodding his head going, hmm. Wouldn't that be amazing if they said, you know what? We understand at this time of your life, there's a lot of sexual temptation. And we believe that your decision to do it right by getting married first is something worthy to support financially. And we will give you extra help because you have chosen to get married. Those of us who are children of those who have grown up in the Adventist uh, system, there is assistance for children of, pa of pastors and of teachers in school. And I want you to know, my freshman and sophomore years in college, 
they cover a large portion of the uh, tuition. But as soon as I married my wife, I'm cut off. I lose all support. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if there was part of the church organization that said, no, we will continue to support you because you've chosen to do it right and get married before you have sex. Wow, wouldn't that be amazing? What message would that send to young people? Uh, 1 Corinthians, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Again, all on the issue of, of the struggle that many single people go through in the area of morality. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And that doesn't mean handshakes. Those are okay. Okay? Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. What is this verse saying? He's saying here that, you know what? God designed us to have certain hormones that have a sexual desire. And he says, rather than lust, get married. It's a good thing. Better to do that than to sin. And 1 Corinthians 7, verses 8 and 9. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Here he's talking about support of singles. And there are some people that don't have that burning desire, and they choose to remain single. And that's a wonderful thing. And we should support that in the church. Now there's also the, the factor of being lonely. Singles feel left out. We read here, For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. In the church, it is very important to include everyone. Amen? Oh, come on. It's very important to include everyone because we are one body, right? We are many members, but we are one body. And no one should feel left out. No one should feel useless. No one should feel like, well, because you aren't such and such, then we can't use you. Then you're not vital. Those who are married, a challenge to you. You need to go out of your way to include those who are single in your family activities. To make them feel a part. Each person in the body of Christ, also known as the church family, they need to know that they are valuable, that they are vital. Go to the singles that you know. Invite them to dinner. Take them with you on a family outing to a state park. Invite them to go out to dinner. Invite them to come on a Saturday night just to play games with your family at your house. You get the idea. Let them know we appreciate you and we want you here. We don't want you anywhere else. You are important. Ultimately, those who are unmarried know that Christ is always present and because of that, they are never alone. They are never alone. Now, there's also you have the, the weird factor. <laughs> The weird factor, the, the, the talk there about the body of Christ, it says, For I say, though, the grace given me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. This, I must say, is a message to us who are married. We need to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought, just because we are married. In fact, Scripture says some very positive things to and about those who are not married. Uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 through 35. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 32 through 35, but I want you to be without care. 
He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper and that you may serve the Lord without distractions. I need to tell you this. There are some things that a single person can do that a married person cannot do. Amen? Come on, amen? amen. Those who are single have time and focus on things of God that those of us who have the worries about our spouses and our children just don't have. In fact, many times there are singles who have financial resources that people who are married don't have for the good of the church to move evangelism forward, to help pay for mission work. I heard one pastor that in his church there was a, a young person that wanted to go to the mission field. Young adult had chosen at this point not to marry. And came to the, the pastor and said, Pastor, we need help. Trying to raise $5,000 to go to the mission field. Could you give $500? Well, the pastor knew that he and his wife and his kids couldn't afford to do that. And he said, I'll do even better. He went to a savings account. He wrote, the, he wrote, wrote out a check for $3,000. And he said, you're going in my place. I, as a married person, am going to pay you as a single to go do mission work that I can't do. Single people can do things that married people can't do. And we should support that. I believe since those unmarried have these opportunities, married folks in the body should do what they can to support them in all the ministry endeavors they're called to do. Matthew chapter 19. Turn to Matthew chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. Matthew 19, verses 11 and 12. Now, you have to understand a little bit of the context of this verse. You know, sometimes um, when you take a verse out of context, you can twist it and it can mean something that God never intended it to. So here in Matthew chapter 19, the disciples are talking to him after they had uh, departed Galilee, came to a region of Judea beyond the Jordan. Multitudes followed, the Pharisees followed, and this is the question they asked. Is it lawful, this is in verse number three, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he gives his answer. And then in verse 7, and they said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce to put her away? And he answers that question. So this is the context where the Pharisees are questioning him. And in verses 11 and 12, he says, But he said to them, All cannot accept this saying, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born thus from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to accept it, let him accept it. Now a eunuch, basic definition is someone who could not procreate. Now that ha sometimes happened physically. Um, Daniel. For instance, if you read in, 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 in the Old Testament, Daniel, when he was taken to uh, Babylon, he was made a eunuch uh, because he worked in, the, in Nebuchadnezzar's harem and he didn't want anything happening with this Israelite there in the palace. But this verse says that there are some who were, made eun who were eunuchs from birth. There are those today still who are born and there are genetic issues, and they are unable to procreate. And then it talks about those who were made so by others. But then Jesus talks about those who made themselves eunuchs. 
that does not mean they physically harmed themselves. That means they made a choice not to procreate. They are eunuchs by choice. Notice this inclusiveness. Now this last one, again, was not speaking of physically making the procreation impossible because uh, when you were physically harmed like that, you were not allowed in the temple any longer. And Jesus would not have, have uh, promoted that at all. What he's saying is it was their choice. These are those who decided to dedicate themselves to the service of the Lord by not raising up a family, by not getting married. We find an example of someone who did this later in life in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 2, verse 36. This is after Jesus was born. He was brought to the temple to be dedicated. And it says, Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, the, tri the tribe of Asher. She was of great age. She had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. A woman who had been married was now a widow and chose not to remarry but to dedicate the rest of her life to the service of the Lord. What a wonderful single woman. What a great example for us. We have a, a friend of ours, a uh, uh, former roommate of Sharon's while she was in college, who has chosen not to get married. She doesn't feel the urge to. And she is able to help so many people she has nephews and nieces, and through her income, she's able to help them. In, in our Jefferson Central Church, we have uh, some, some ladies who live about an hour away, and, and one is, is uh, divorced. The others have never gotten married. They work in the medical field, and every year at the beginning of school, they bring bags full of school supplies for the children. Because they say, we don't have children, so these are our children. Single women who bless others out of their means, who do a great work for God. Singles need to be supported. We need to celebrate them and what they do in the church because they are vital to the church. In the Jewish economy, those who could not or chose not to procreate in the Old Testament times were considered cursed of God. Think about the heartache of Sarah, of Rachel, of Hannah, when they could not bear children. More than once in Genesis, God commanded, be fruitful and multiply. Those who could not were considered second class. In fact, those who were eunuchs were, again, not allowed to worship in the temple. But, but listen to this. Turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56. Isaiah, chapter 56. This is vital to hear. We're starting in verse number 1. Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath. And keeps his hand from doing any evil. Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuchs say, Here I am, a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and choose what pleases me, and hold fast my covenant. Even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Again, eunuchs from birth 
who have been made so or who have chosen that. The Bible says those God will have a place in his house and they will have a name better than that of sons and daughters. That's powerful. God supports singles. He loves them and has given them promises in the word that are incredible. We should support them as well. Let them know we care and that we want them here and that they are vital to the mission of the church. God has a very special place in his heart for those who are single, whether by choice or not. With the fact that we all are part of his body, we need to let them know. We need to let them know that we support them and that in the body of Christ, they are never, ever alone. Have you told a single recently how much you care about them? Have you told them how much you support them? Have you told them I'm praying for you. How can I help to lift the burdens that you carry that people don't understand? We need to be about our Father's business. And part of his business is to help those who are single.
Thanks again for joining us during this worship hour. It's been a blessing having you with us. As we close, I just want to extend a special invitation to you and your family to come and worship with us. We worship every Saturday morning at 1045, and you're welcome anytime. We're located at in Southwest Fort Worth area. The address is below, and we just hope to see you someday soon. Blessings and have a wonderful day.